So one of the big issues with regenerative medicine based on stem cells is that we have to make sure it's not only effective but also safe. And there's really agreement in the field that the main issue in terms of safety is the ability of stem cells to cause either tumors or cancers. We also have to make sure that we don't do any harm. We have to make sure that, say, in a patient who has a spinal cord injury, we not only can help that patient, but then subsequently that patient will not get a tumor as a side effect because then we've really failed. So people have been putting a lot of effort into making stem cells that are more effective for regenerative medicine, but at the same time, um, it, it appears that we haven't done sufficient testing on those for their tumor genicity, and that, that's really a key area that we need to investigate. And so the grant that my lab has received from CIRM is going to directly address that question. And one of the reasons I'm so excited about getting this funding is I think this will really be the first um, grant that is directly asking the question, how can we improve the safety of stem cell-based regenerative medicine? But we also can sort of take a step down into the molecular level. And there we also have some concerns because what we found is that much of the machinery that in essence runs stem cells and tells them what to do and is responsible for, for their you know, very positive abilities to mediate regenerative medicine, much of that molecular machinery surprisingly is also operative in tumor cells. And so that's a real uh, intriguing puzzle for us and we think what that means is that the tumor cells in essence have kind of co-opted the stem-like program from stem cells and are using it for something negative, of course, which is to build this tumor. One approach to the problem of stem cells being able to cause tumors is to paradoxically not use the stem cells themselves for the therapy, but instead use what we would call precursor cells or progenitor cells that are derived from the stem cells. And these precursor cells and progenitor cells appear in our initial studies to have a much lower rate of causing tumors and they're, they're like stem cells, but they're, they're more directed towards a certain pathway. So for example, they might only be able to form neurons or muscle or something like that, another specific tissue. And yet they have a much uh, decreased potential for causing tumors. So we think this might be a really effective approach for solving, um, at least in some cases, this tumor issue. So one, so one additional concern I have is the restrictions on the federal funding for generating new human embryonic stem cell lines because the existing lines, while they're very useful, are limited. And, and since that freeze was imposed on generating new human embryonic stem cell lines, we've learned a lot about what makes those human embryonic stem cells so useful. We've learned a lot about how to grow them better and how to generate them better. And that kind of leaves us as a field with a body of knowledge that we can't use to some extent because of the restrictions on federal funding to make better human embryonic stem cells. And by better, I also mean they would probably be less likely to cause tumors. I think a number of things give me hope. One is that we're making such rapid progress in understanding how these stem cells are programmed, what is telling them to do a certain job versus another job. And so I think that knowledge is, in essence, a powerful tool for us to solve the problems that we're facing, including the issue of tumor genicity. And then I think the speed with which the field is moving is very encouraging. Those things together are very powerful for helping us solve these problems and make me feel much more optimistic about the fact that within, say, a horizon of just a few years, we might solve some of these key issues.